This is a quick start video for the Espresso Forge. Basically, this is going to show you guys how to uh, get your forge set up, how it comes in the box when you order it, and in general, just a few tips and tricks on making your first shot and all that sort of stuff. So, as you can see, this will be basically what's in the box. You may have um, a couple other accessories depending on what you order, but you'll have additionally a packet of grease, which isn't shown here. Um, but here the, the stand legs and the top T handle do actually uh, come off of the machine. So I just want to show more or less how you would get started and um, how you put those together. It's a pretty simple process. Basically with the T handle, um, we'll take the the ring stand set that aside. With the T-handle, I, I ship it now with the piston inside, and that's because you can um, either, either invert it a little bit and get that to come out just a tiny bit and twist it on, or you can actually, when, it, when it's down, you can still, this threads in just a little bit. So if you get it, if you get it started, it'll thread in, and then um, you can go ahead and give it a pull out once you got it threaded a bit and then keep going until it's tight. So this is just going to help with, um, I used to ship the handle intact, but it, you know, with it being at the very extreme end of the box, this will help against um, shipping damage. So there you have it. That's your, your piston, which does come all the way out. Um, first time you get it, just inspect the ends to make sure there's a bit of grease here. I grease everything. Um, you can wipe it all off and re-grease it with the included grease. You can use whatever grease you want. Um, I use Molly Coat uh, uh, 111, which is a food grade, um, you know, inert grease. It'll pick up over time. It'll pick up uh, black particles from both coffee as well as a little bit of the wearing of the seals. But mostly it's not the wearing of the seals that you'll see. It's mostly all coffee finds that migrate up through there. So... It does blacken up, but um, it, it's not a big deal. I just I just leave it until it goes dry and then regrease it as you as you need. You don't need to do that too often. Okay. So more or less, um, any of your small accessories on the on the forge will be inside the basket. Um, if you didn't order any, you get two. Uh, piston sealing o-rings which are the black ones and you can see them on the piston and then you get one red one keep that one that is used for sealing the the tube to what I call the top plate so um, inside there if you were to unthread this top plate which is pretty hard to do um, you'll see that there's an o-ring attached to the, the tube here at the very bottom um, you can see pictures on my website but um, that essentially keeps water from leaking out of this area here. So that's all. that all can be set aside and used for later. Set up our ring stand here. Um, just the only thing to notice here is that these are obviously not threaded. Um, they're just a press fit. But when you go to press, try not to press straight. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. Try not to press straight on like that. They do go at an angle into the hole. So just keep in mind that, you know, you can wiggle them around a little bit, twist a little bit, and they should slide in with medium to, to high amount of effort. I want it to where, you know, this thing doesn't just drop out of there um, when you lift your stand up, that you can, you can essentially put all these in and you can pick it up by the ring and you're not going to have your, your legs just fall out onto the bench. So that's the purpose of that. Um, not too much to see here. That's your ring stand. Okay, so making your first shot, basically what you're going to want to do is obviously you're going to want to fill this up with coffee. Um, the, a few problems that I've seen people have is Filling, overfilling this basket will not allow enough headroom when you, after you tamp 
and the shower screen needs a bit of room there. Now you can press it a little bit, but if with the ring out, if you were to press here and you, you can't really push against the seal very well, if you notice that you know you can rock it back and forth, it's not really solid on there, um, you've likely overfilled it with coffee. So I suggest starting at 16 to 17 grams of coffee in this basket. Um, it, it does, if you're using a really dark roast, you'll need less. And if you're using a light roast, you can fit more. So you may be able to fit in a light roast 20 grams easily, but on a dark roast, 18 grams may be way too much. So go ahead and experiment, but just keep in mind if you can't if you fit overfill, you're not going to be able to lock in and tighten your basket all the way. And you're going to have leaking um, out of the threads. It'll look like it's leaking around here or maybe even um, in this area here around the, ba the bottom of the basket, depending on how much leaking you have. Um, threading on the basket is, is designed to be pretty easy. Um, now I've made it e easier with some machining tricks so that there's a large range where you can start. Um, but I've still tried to make putting on the band uh, with the logo to the pressure gauge alignment as the most optimal or efficient way to do it. So if you line up um, the logo and the pressure gauge, there should be a, a little click or you should be pretty solid right there and you should be able to just thread on. So, and then when, when, you're, gonna, when you're gonna do this, um, when it's hot, you, you typically can just go and tell snug. That's usually fine. Um, but I tend to, um, or I test these when they're all cold. So I fill up every unit with water and I really crank down to basically seat this, all the seals and everything and in that case I really need to get some extra leverage so I typically hold on to the pressure gauge and I give it a good crank down. Now you don't need to do that again most of the time but let's say when you're trying to loosen this you did crank it down really tight um, or you know you didn't realize it. If you just leave it hot to cool down it's going to likely loosen once it becomes cool. Um, that's typically what I do, and I typically clean the machine very little. Um, but if you want to take it out hot or you really cranked it down and you're having trouble, um, again, bracing on the other side with your palm like this so that the pressure gauge is against it and twisting this way will get you more leverage. And brace against here and allows me to untighten. If you're worried about the pressure gauge getting... Um, bent or damaged from using it as a, a lever, basically. Um, I've been doing this a lot on my machine and trying to really um, abuse it, and I haven't had any problems. The What you're actually bracing against is just the housing, and it's bolted to the, the, um, the base of it here. The internals inside with the, with the tube, um, which, which does the actual pressure reading, actually is floating inside there. So typically, unless you have a really hard um, knock on the pressure gauge, it's pretty hard to damage these things, which does happen sometimes during shipping. Um, I'm trying to make that better and, and protect it a lot better, but if you do have a problem with the pressure gauge, just let me know. Um, other than that, um, that is pretty much it. So enjoy your, your forge once you get it.